Live from Los Angeles, this is E! News Week in Review. Coming up, celebrity justice. For Madonna, victory over the transient who stalked and threatened to kill her. And Carol O'Connor, winning the crusade against the dealer who sold drugs to his late son. I thought the judge was going to find this guy guilty because the guy is guilty. Then, O.J. Simpson, his video goes on sale this weekend. Will you buy it or help jam the phone lines? Also, we have for you today celebrity couples. We've got the latest on Tom and Nicole, Brooke and Andre, Brad and... Gwyneth. Very good. Plus, will Roseanne be a single mom next season? How about that couple? TV's domestic goddess faces life without Mr. Goodman next on E! News Week in Review. everybody. Thanks for joining us. Hope you're having a good weekend. I'm Kathleen Sullivan. I'm Steve Kometko. We've got seven whole days worth of entertainment news coming at you, beginning with a couple of trials. The drifter who stalked Madonna was convicted of every charge against him Monday. A jury took just four and a half hours to reach the guilty verdict, and Madonna said she was, quote, very grateful. Robert Hoskins could face 11 years in prison when he's sentenced next month. Madonna's testimony and surveillance videos that showed him lurking around her house were part of the evidence that persuaded the jury that this man should spend some time behind bars. As far as the women were concerned, there was no doubt. Uh, the men took a little bit of convincing as to what was and I mean, what would and what wouldn't scare a person. So that was basically it. The judge is going to be the one deciding what the sentence is. It's my job to try and get him a minimum possible sentence, and that's, that's what I'm going to do. But you just can't send this cat back out on the street. That's doing him a disservice, he's, he's, isn't it? He's, he's not going to be just getting sent back out on the street. Before his arrest, Hoskins was shot by Madonna's bodyguard when he jumped the wall around her house. And now in a trial without a jury, a judge has convicted the man charged with selling drugs to Carol O'Connor's late son. Hugh O'Connor killed himself last spring after years of struggling with drug abuse. His father made it a mission to bust Harry Parsegian who was found guilty of possessing cocaine for sale. I thought the judge was going to find this guy guilty because the guy is guilty. You looked in the county of Los Angeles and found similar cases. You would not find any that have been prosecuted with this much bigger. I would like other people uh, who know these reptiles on the street to go and tell the police about them. Nothing's going to give me peace. I've lost a son. and. Uh, I'll go to my grave with, uh, uh, without any peace over that. I'll have peace over other things, though, God willing. And Persegian will be sentenced next month. Prosecutors say he has no prior criminal record, but he could face six years in jail. And after five years behind bars, Kristen Brando has walked out of prison. The son of Marlon Brando, who was jailed for killing his sister's boyfriend, was released just after midnight in the darkness. He managed to avoid the media. Christian Brando served half his 10-year sentence for pleading guilty to voluntary manslaughter. Prison officials said he was picked up by a private citizen, but they refused to reveal if his father was there to meet him. O.J. Simpson's video interview goes on sale this weekend, and the backlash has already begun. Ronald Goldman's family asked people to boycott the video, and a pair of L.A. radio talk show hosts urged listeners to flood the mail order phone lines to keep O.J. from selling his side of the story. Just about everything we're demonstrating, or just about everything that I'm alluding to, is nothing that was evidence in the case. These are all Marshall's theories. <laughs> but the interest is still there. Scenes from the home video gave hard copy its highest ratings of the season. And the reporter who interviewed O.J. spoke with NBC's John Larson for Dateline. Like he was lying to you? Sure. Sure. But he explains who that shadowy figure was that Alan Park saw. Can you tell us who the figure was? Was it Simpson? No, I can't tell you. The producer of O.J. the Interview is threatening to sue anyone who tries to block sales of the video cassette. So imagine Roseanne without Dan. It looks like Roseanne will be back for another season, but without John Goodman. ABC is hinting that Goodman, who plays Roseanne's husband on the hit show, will not return for a ninth season. It's been on the years that long? The actor wants to spend more time working on movies. Now, it was rumored that the show itself would not be on the air after this year, but now ABC says that Roseanne is very much looking forward to playing a single parent. I bet she does that well, too. Had a lot of experience. If you're looking for a synonym for miracle, try Chris Reeve. The paralyzed actor now says that he is going to lend not only his support, but money to research that develop cures for spinal cord injuries like his own. Chris Reeve has already donated a quarter of a million dollars, 
and he's given approval to use his name for the Reeve Irvine Research Center in Irvine, California. And by phone, he said he was grateful for all of the work that that center is doing. Back five years ago, I probably would not have survived the accident that I had. And today we stand on the threshold of a cure. And on Wednesday, Chris Reeve's 16-year-old son, Matthew, launched a campaign in London to help raise research funds. Chris Reeve is paralyzed from the neck down after being thrown from a horse last May, and his courage and strength are inspirations to everyone. While this week's snowstorm was good news for ski buffs, Republican Congressman Sonny Bono is probably hoping for sunnier skies. The entertainer turned politician hurt himself while skiing Thursday. Bono and another skier ran into each other at California's Big Bear Lake Ski Resort, and Bono wound up with uh, 12 stitches in his face. The wound was visible when he made a campaign stop later that day where Bono, in true political style, blamed the other guy. At least we know he's learned something in Washington. TV's Gilligan isn't having much luck in the weather department either. The skipper's little buddy was marooned on an island by a snowstorm, not the tropical variety. Bob Denver, who played Gilligan on the campy 60s TV show Gilligan's Island, still seen in reruns, was stuck on Manhattan Island Tuesday. He was in New York for some personal appearances and had planned to travel to West Virginia to celebrate his 61st right. birthday later that day, but Mother Nature had other things in mind. With the airports closed, Denver stayed in the Big Apple and had ice cream and cake with his agent instead. I would prefer to be stranded in New York City with gorgeous George. Yes, gorgeous George Clooney last week on a promotional tour for his new movie was stranded in New York City. But George, as a mean, vicious vampire buster, brace yourselves, that's what he plays in his first major movie. It's a far cry from the sweet, caring Dr. We know and love on ER. It's going to work. Shut up, it's going to work just fine. I want to go on record as saying I think this is a very bad idea. That's the way some may feel about George Clooney's decision to forsake his clean-cut image for a role in From Dust Till Dawn. In this film, he portrays a tattoo-sporting renegade running from the law. I mean, the movie Once Were Warriors, uh, Lee Kamahari, you know? I saw it, and I remember how kind of badass it made those guys look. And I'm on a TV series, and I wanted to do something to kind of shake it up a little bit. But Clooney's film character doesn't know the definition of bad until he and his brother stumble into a vampire-packed saloon where the blood flows as freely as whiskey. This is of mice and men. That's what this is. And my brother keeps playing with the rabbits. That's all it is. He's a lane. Um, and I'm just protecting my brother. So I'm not so mean. I just keep trying to fix things he breaks. Because I know that whatever is out there trying to get in is pure evil straight from hell. And if there is a hell, and those sons of bitches are from it, then there has got to be a heaven. Perhaps even tougher than proving that his character isn't beyond redemption, maybe convincing moviegoers he's Quentin Tarantino's sibling. We look a little bit alike. You know, we both have, uh, you know, we have a chin that, are, you know, that touches our knees. You know, we have some similarities. <laughs> George may have to take it on the chin if fans ultimately let him know that they prefer his decisively more congenial bedside manner. I'm ready. Fire away. Bring it on. I can take it. From Dust Till Dawn also stars Harvey Keitel and Juliette Lewis. It'll be open in theaters next weekend. What did George say? He has a chin that touches his knee. Mm -hmm. Makes the mind wander, doesn't it? <laughs> Jay Leno, Quentin Tarantino, and George Clooney separated at birth. <laughs> Still to come on E! News Week in Review... Babies and Kisses, Tom Cruise, Nicole Kidman, Brooke Shields, Andre Agassi. Plus, is the sexiest man alive settling down? Gwyneth and Brad owe it all to Lucky Seven. Oh, man. I'm a loser. Oh, you did. Put on your strapless. I, I'm not at any other parties all year. Pile up your hair. People are here to help a cause and to see and be seen and dress up. It's by invitation only, but E can get you in. Once I learned about it, I, I want to come back every year. Food from Wolfgang Puck, fashion from Barney's, and glamour from where else? Hollywood, the Fire and Ice Ball, Saturday at 6 Eastern, 3 Pacific. If it's happening in entertainment, you know it's always happening on E. Pizza Hut talks to 50,000 people all across America. Hello. Hello.
Pizza Hut. How do you know I had pizza? Because we want to know what you think. The delivery guy was right on time. I gave the green peppers to my sister. And it was just the right amount of cheese. I love pizza for breakfast. In fact, Dad likes pizza better than Mom's cooking. After all, it's not our Pizza Hut. It's your Pizza Hut. Call back anytime you want some advice. You'll love the stuff we're made of. Move over, plain old diaper wipes. Make room for something really new. New quilted Baby Fresh wipes. They're better than ever. Because now Baby Fresh is not just thick, it's quilted. Quilted to be extra thick and most important, soft and incredibly gentle. New quilted Baby Fresh. As gentle with your baby as you are. And when it's time to potty train, look for Kid Fresh, the do-it-myself flushable wipes. <laughs> this is what I hate about car advertising. I want a car that doesn't need height. One with a little elbow room. And safety. Show me standard dual airbags. Any luck, Frank? Give me a powerful, efficient engine. I can figure out it's smart if you tell me it's well-made and it's gonna last. Tell me a car like this exists. Please. The 1996 Toyota Tercel. Ah, somebody was listening. Well, Grady, we think you're ready for the outside. Thank you. Hello, kid. Time for a crispity, crunchy, peanut butter <laughs> Butterfinger Blast. Crispity! Crunchity, peanut buttery. What are your senses? Crunchity! Have a Butterfinger Blast from Nestle. This is our kissy, huggy segment. Aww. Right? In ritzy Palm Beach, Tom Cruise and Nicole Kidman had the locals buzzing when they showed up in the, well, the unlikeliest of all places. The couple was seen on an earlier visit here trying to sneak into the Palm Beach County Courthouse with a baby the other day. But the couple wasn't adopting a third child this week, as many had speculated. According to their publicists, they were simply putting the final touches on their second adoption. A son, Connor, Cruz and Kibben adopted that baby boy last year, and they adopted their first child, Isabella, in 1993. Well, Friends, the television show, is not a love match that Andre Agassi wants to replay. The tennis champion got very worked up when he saw his girlfriend, Brooke Shields, kiss Matt LeBlanc during a scene for an upcoming show. Now, Agassi was watching Brooke act and kiss as part of her guest starring role, but the smooch with LeBlanc had some sizzle and boy did Agassi get steamed. And she'll say Agassi complained when the, uh, during that scene, especially when the audience seemed to think that she and Blank were just getting into their roles a little too much. The special hour load, hour long, long episode. I get nervous when I talk about kissing and smooching and stuff. The special hour long episode of Friends airs on Super Bowl Sunday. Just a little practice is all you need to get right over it like that. They may have started out as friends, but it's much more than friendship now for actors Brad Pitt and Gwyneth Paltrow. The pair fell in love on a movie set, and now when folks tell them to make a friend, they do. It's been romance ever since, and all interested parties, I'm sorry to report, there is a rumor that the once crowned sexiest man alive may be thinking of settling down. Brad Pitt and Gwyneth Paltrow seem to be attached at the lip. They began dating last year during the filming of Seven, and now they're seldom apart. People magazine even dedicated next week's cover to their down-home love story. Apparently, it was immediate for both of them. You know, their, their attraction was instantaneous. I'm a loser. Oh, you did. Pitt may be breaking hearts everywhere, but he doesn't seem to care. He's all but abandoned his L.A. home to search for one closer to Paltrow's place in New York. Gwyneth, uh, who's 10 years younger than, than the 32-year-old Pitt, is... is uh, seems to have uh, seems to really be the one i mean if this this is true he really is in love and his fans are in love with him too people just can't get enough of him uh, and that's a, certainly a good clue as to what makes a movie star but what's most important to him is that he's taken seriously as an actor as for all the publicity those close to him say he takes it all in stride yeah i think that kind of healthy attitude will serve him well in the years to come because god knows he's not gonna I don't think he's not going to go away anytime soon. Brad Pitt's uh, next role is playing an attorney in the film Sleepers. You can see him now in the futuristic thriller Twelve Monkeys opposite Bruce Willis. So the, the Woody Allen one was Sleeper. Sleeper. Singular. Still to come, Hollywood. Hair, body, and makeup from Jennifer Aniston, Claudia Schiffer, and Alicia Silverstone.
plus the number one Baywatch lifeguard who knows a thing about hair, body, and makeup, <laughs> gets a Hollywood walk-on. Simmer down, Todd. Simmer down. You'll get what you want. Simmer down. Only have time for the good parts? Then cut to the chase. It's a movie in just 30 minutes with Art Man. We've been screening around the clock to get the latest show ready. This Tuesday night, it's Carnival Story. What was this movie rated? Each week you get a major star, a great film, and I usher you through a story in just 30 minutes. Ooh, sorry. Catch Carnival Story on Cut to the Chase, Tuesday night at 8.30 Eastern, 5.30 Pacific, right here on East. You take your lips in the wind and into the snow, so you better take your chapstick wherever you go. Chapstick, chapstick protects. Love your lips. Get moisturizer. To help heal dry, chapped lips for healthy lips. Chapstick. Make up your mind, all right? You're either a contractor or you are a thief, all right? You are a contractor or a thief. How many thieves do you know got day jobs? Critics everywhere are calling To If I See, the best romantic comedy film of the year. Do you love me, Frank? What do you mean? Bye-bye. Sandra Bullock gives another terrific performance. I feel pretty good. <laughs> a perfect date movie, joyful and romantic. Relax, I would never hurt you. Sandra Bullock, Dennis Leary, To If I See. Just kiss Rated R. Now playing. Meg, look at this. Old Neil Crisp has undergone a prodigious metamorphosis. He means they've improved it. There's now a veritable cornucopia of ambrosia. <laughs> it's crispier with a better oatmeal taste. Bingo! Bingo! Introducing the big new taste of oatmeal crisp. Oatmeal never sounded so good. The limos are here, the gowns are on, and the stars are out. It's the Golden Globes pre-show with Joan Rivers, Sunday afternoon at 5 Eastern on E. Last year, in an effort to go pick up videos to watch in the comfort of their homes, Americans spent an extraordinary amount of their money at the gas pump. But some people discovered the ease of having Hollywood's latest hits delivered right into their homes with pay-per-view. So why go out when great entertainment is right at your fingertips? For the best view of movies, turn to pay-per-view. Pay-per-view delivers. Start off your new year with one of these great movies on pay-per-view this month. Batman, not Bruce Wayne. Gotham City's Dark Knight returns in the action drama Batman Forever. Uh, hi. He's been waiting nearly a century for a friend. Man. The family comedy Casper. Uh, watching you. Travel to the heart of the jungle and discover the hidden secrets of Congo. Smash hit movies for everyone. Pay-per-view delivers. Kramer was right. My friend Kim told me the sponge is off the market. So what are you going to do? I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to do a hard target search of every drugstore, general store, health store, grocery store, and a 25-block radius. <laughs> <laughs> yes, of all for ABC, or a festival for CBS this week, getting in the top five. But a couple moves by the networks this week. One worked, the other didn't. Now, first, the series The TV Guide called the best new show of the season and most critics agreed it barely has a pulse after moving to monday nights murder one from stephen bochco was played by low ratings opposite er and after a long hiatus and it's highly publicized moved it was clobbered again by another medical show this chicago hope but the story is completely different for news radio which has also moved to a new day and amy powell now has more on that let's talk about evidence ABC's legal drama, Murder One, finished third behind Chicago Hope on CBS and a Tory Spelling movie on NBC. Despite its bad showing, TV Guide's Mary Murphy says Murder One hasn't hit death row yet. Well, Murder One did better on Monday night than it did at all on Thursday night. So there is hope for Murder One. I'm not going to worry about what I can't control. Not a boy. Murder One isn't the only series making a change. NBC's comedy News Radio moved from Tuesday to Sunday and came up a winner, finishing in the top 20. How do you think I should handle this? Oh, just do your job well and you'll be fine. The networks really aren't trying to confuse audiences with these changes. There is a clear-cut explanation. In the end, you want the advertising dollar and you want the audience. And you want the key audience from 18 to 49. According to Murphy, shows that survived moving to other days include the comedies Sybil and Frasier. At the networks, truly, the people who develop the shows are key, but the people who can program these shows to put the show into the right time slot, for instance, putting Frasier on Tuesday night. Time slot is the key. I give you the world. 
In Los Angeles, I'm Amy Powell for E! News. And uh, here is a new winner in the ratings game, NBC's comedy Third Rock from the Sun actually skyrocketed over ABC's Home Improvement when it debuted on Tuesday night, The Alien. Yeah, that's right. Uh, maybe what drew in the huge audience for Third Rock from the Sun was an out-of-this-world storyline about a group of aliens from another planet. Are aliens from something other than another planet? Yeah, Mexico. Oh, I suppose. And a stellar cast headed by Jane Curtin and John Lithgow. May I remind you that we are not to alter the lives of the inhabitants of this planet in any way? I play a sort of a fuzzy headed, absent minded professor type in a small town in, in Ohio. Uh, I'm one of four aliens who is visiting the Earth and doing research, and, and the four of us are sort of doing our best to imitate a, a typical nuclear family. The family consists of four extraterrestrials who find the human experience quite exhilarating. <laughs> Obviously, there's a whole world of new experiences waiting for them, but these aliens do keep a low profile by following the lead of real human beings like Dr. Mary Albright played by former Saturday Night Live comedian, Jane Curtin. A wedding? Yeah, a big reception. A ritual? Very traditional, crying, dancing. And the female devours the male immediately after the ceremony? She's attracted to most things that move. She's a very pompous, arrogant, and easily stupid woman. <laughs> but easily flattered, very easily very flattered. Easy, easy, easy date. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Woo! Ah! Where would keep going? God, we're good. Third Rock from the Sun is the third series for Curtin, but the first for Lithgow. Both agree it's a rewarding experience. I like the immediacy of television. I like the fact that you get the script uh, on Monday and you film it on Friday. And it's a wonderful thing to go to work today and spend the entire day just figuring out how you're going to make people laugh. I mean, there's something exhilarating about that. Like us. Like us, we hope. <laughs> Third Rock from the Sun airs Tuesdays on NBC. Well, we're not busy trying to figure out what hair is moving from my head. I don't see one. I think it looks I can't odd. see it either. Everyone says some. Well, now back to Planet Hollywood. The town, David Hasselhoff, is the newest name on the Hollywood Walk of Fame. The Baywatch lifesaver got his star on Thursday. Hasselhoff squeezed the ceremony into his busy schedule for Baywatch, one of the most popular television shows in the world. If you believe in yourself, you know, your dreams can come true because, I mean, to be on Hollywood Boulevard and uh, to be honored like this really is every little boy's dream. I'm going to come down here very uh, early in the morning, you know, just by myself. Just walk down there and go, yeah. And then I'll probably get mugged, but, you know. <laughs> I thought little boys wanted to be baseball players. As soon as the ceremony ended, Hasselhoff rushed back to Malibu for more sun and surf and sand and Pamela on the Baywatch set. Still to come, Mr. Blackwell's fashion hit list and uh, Claudia Schiffer's perfectly fit list. You thought I was going to ask you what you wanted to be when you were a little boy. No. Plus, it's win plates and showtime. Find out the best bets for your Oscar pool. I think even when we find out who the five nominees are in each category, we're going to have a very hard time predicting the winner. The limos are here, the gowns are on, and the stars are out. If you're into TV, if you're into movies, you see them all here tonight. The award season's begun, and Joan Rivers will be greeting the stars live at the Golden Globes pre-show. We're going to talk to Tom Hanks, Arnold Schwarzenegger, John Travolta, Jody Foster. Who has Joan Rivers? E. Who takes you this close to the stars? E. And where's it all happening? All right, it happens on E. Fine. The Golden Globes pre-show with Joan Rivers, Sunday afternoon at 5 Eastern on E. Movies, restaurants, women. How much further can you go? I mean, unless I go to Sweden, have a sex change operation. Sylvester Stallone, uncut. Friday at 8.30 Eastern, only on E. Uh, <laughs> this is what I hate about car advertising. I want a car that doesn't need height. What with a little elbow room? And safety. Show me standard dual airbags. Any luck brakes? Give me a powerful, efficient engine. I can figure out it's smart if you tell me it's well-made and it's going to last. Tell me a car like this exists. Please. The 1996 Toyota Tercel. Ah, somebody was listening. To be or not to be, that is the question. Whether it is nobler in the mind to suffer. Peter, 
what? Peter, try it backwards. Certainly. Question is that B2 not or B2. Peter, I meant the pizza. I knew that. Stuffed crust pizza from Pizza Hut. With cheese baked right into the crust, you've got to try it backwards. Hot pizza of May, we stuff the lovely. Now, a few words from Archie Bunker on evolution. We didn't crawl out from under no rocks. We didn't have no tails. And we didn't come from monkeys you atheistic pinko meathead. <laughs> Archie Bunker on gun control. Did you know that 65% of the people murdered in the last 10 years were killed by handguns? Would it make you feel any better, little girl, if they was pushed out of windows? And now Archie Bunker on video cassette with All in the Family, the collector's edition. The Emmy-winning sitcom that broke all the rules. Yours for only $4.95 plus shipping and handling for your first four-episode video cassette. Now you can experience the legendary wisdom of America's foremost expert on everything. Archie Bunker on politics. And Salvatore, Feldman, O'Reilly, Nelson. It's an Italian, a Jew, an Irishman, and a regular American. <laughs> what I call a balanced ticket. You'll even hear from Archie on the job. To get your first four-episode video for only $4.95, have your credit card ready and call toll-free 1-800-547-3636. John Travolta just keeps on staying alive, doesn't he? So does that metaphor, obviously. The National Association of Theaters proved it by naming Travolta Male Star of the Year. Travolta will be honored for the second time at NATO's annual Show West convention in March. The actor plays a fighter pilot in his next movie, Broken Arrow, and has at least three other film projects in the works. NATO also plans to give Sandra Bullock the award for Female Star of the Year. And if you've been keeping score of all the Film Critics Awards, pick up your pencil because here's another one. Listen to this name. The newly formed Broadcast Film Critics Association, is that Siskel and Ebert? I it must so. be. Has chosen Sense and Sensibility as the best film of 1995. Mr. Willoughby can be in no doubt of your enthusiasm for him. Why should he doubt it? The film star Emma Thompson also took home the Best Screenplay Award for her adaptation of the Jane Austen novel. And Pickled Pig's Feet applaud Babe, which won for Special Family Film. And Mel Gibson was voted best director for his epic, Braveheart. They may take our lives, but they'll never take our freedom! Men in Kilts, the sequel. The Best Actor category, Kevin Bacon won for Murder in the First. And Nicole Kidman got the nod for Best Actress for her performance in To Die For. The Broadcast Film Critics Association is made up of nearly 60 national television, radio, and computer online critics. And then there's the granddaddy of them all, of the course, the Oscars, and the ceremony is just around the corner. Now that means it's time for Academy members to rock the vote. So the nomination ballots for the 68th Annual Academy Awards were being...